knew we weren't going to win, but we had a good time. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, glad uh, that we have this weather today and not last week uh, for our uh, outdoor service. So um, <clears throat> glad that we're all here together this morning to, uh, to worship. So let's see, I have a, a couple of updates. Um, we'll add the family of uh, Marie uh, Heron to our prayer list this morning. Um, this is uh, uh, Carol's uh, sister-in-law who passed away, um, and uh, so we'll have uh, her family and prayers. Uh, and some of you may have seen or heard some uh, updates from Murray. He's, he's right now back in the uh, uh, hospital in Chicago with uh, things about the hernia that he got and the process of the other things and they thought they were going to do surgery on that and fish oil in his leg is also caused by um, by that stuff and the latest I guess is maybe uh, uh, maybe not the maybe coming home and they'll wait and do those things as they were planning on waiting in the first place so um, we don't know with that uh, right now that's the latest that um, that I've heard. So, just uh, came to, to keep him in prayer. Um, he's been working hard on the, on recovering his strength, but at some point we'll have to have some of these things done. So, uh, just want to update you on those prayers. Um, there's an announcement about uh, several things, like that the school kits have been completed, but some things still needed for personal care kits. Um, Debbie, do you want to say anything more? Or? Okay. Uh, and then along with that, there's an announcement about Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Do you want to address that? Sure. Uh, two weeks from today will be our annual Sunday, Sunday, Sunday event um, where everyone is welcome to stay after church. We will have Sunday school. That's kind of the kickoff of Sunday school and confirmation. Um, but uh, after Sunday school, we will be doing lunch. And then we will be putting together some of the personal care kits um, and then doing some youth will be doing some planning. We'll have some games and fun time and then we'll finish with ice cream sundaes. Um, so please plan on staying two weeks from today after church. And also on that uh, Sunday will be uh, on the 15th be a kickoff for choir practice. Uh, so reminder of that. Uh, so was Rick, did you have something? No, okay. All right. For those of you that still use your hymnals to sing from uh, notice that the communion, first communion hymn, 462, I think it is, we're singing verses 1 and 3. Sure, oh, I will say something. Yes. Okay. Um, next Saturday at Prairie View Fall Festival, we're putting together a little group on Saturday afternoon. I know the pastors are singing Friday night. Mm -hmm. Friday at 4.15. 4.15, and then we will be there with a Rick and Friends group uh, at 12.45 to 2.45 or so until the fall off. So make sure to turn in. 30? Yes. Yes, I want to live in Johnson to carry you. We need still a couple of potters if anyone's willing to make a pie. Also, uh, we are asking if they want the tomatoes that can be used at the meals or to be sold at the uh, produce stand. Uh, books, uh, customers, uh, uh, there's a list of things out in the yard uh, that you can sign up. With, uh, oh, also, we could use helping hands to serve the fish on Friday night. Uh, whatever time you can spare, an hour or so. It's always a job. I appreciate your help. Thank you. And I 
have one more thing. Does anyone else have any other announcements today? All right. Uh, so one other thing I know a lot of you know, but uh, today is Special Phil's birthday. So uh, we can give her a, a little happy birthday. Okay. Happy birthday. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
come up here than to be put lower in the presence of a noble.
They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The second lesson comes from the 13th chapter of Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison, as though you are in prison with them. Those who are being tortured, as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life, and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Here is the reading. I invite like the kids to come forward for children's message. Invite the things is people who don't 
uh, have any way to, to invite you or have a big meal for you or have a party for you. So I'm not saying, you know, never um, do something for people that you like and know, but you're saying, what if, what if you did that? Now, the thing that that makes me think of is that God invites us to the party of God's love. And, uh, and we could never repay God. We could never um, earn the right to be uh, at God's party or, or do enough good things uh, to be worthy of God's love. We just, we just can't. But the good news is that God wants us to be with God. God says, you're important to me. I want you to be with me. And so Jesus giving himself and, and calling us into the love of God, that's because God loves us so much. God says, I want you to be at my heart. Um, we, that we can't earn it. And we can't repay God for it. God wants us to be with God. Jesus gives himself so we can be with him. And so knowing that, knowing how much God loves us, then it helps us to, to look for other people. And, you know, maybe um, if somebody seems a little bit lonely or by themselves, maybe it's going and sitting with them, spending some time with them, getting to know them, talking with them a little bit, or playing with them. You know, some way of, of having some kind of uh, celebration and, and uh, or treating a person like they're important, um, especially if they might be lonely or, or not having other, uh, um, other things that are good for them that time. We can share the love of God because God loves us so much. Uh, we know that, that we're already loved. So it's, it's good to share that with other people so they can know. Um, they can feel important and, and loved by God and by you. So let's pray together. God, we thank you that you love us so much um, that through Jesus you call us uh, to be with you in, in the great celebration that has no end. And uh, thank you that through that love that we can love one another, that we can uh, uh, show that we care uh, other people, especially people who, uh, who need to feel like they're cared for. Thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you're invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you'll be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they might invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. 
and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. This is a story of two rabbis, and this is a story, it's not a joke, it's an old for punchline. Um, the story of two rabbis, and, and they lived in uh, what we now call Turkey uh, uh, centuries ago. And uh, these two rabbis, while well, they were uh, well known and, and respected, you know, there weren't cameras uh, that would send their images out, so people heard of their teachings, uh, but uh, but they wouldn't necessarily know who they were when they traveled around. And, and they liked to travel around. These two rabbis, they were brothers. They, they like to travel around um, incognito, um, just wandering uh, w- without uh, uh, supplies or, uh, or big fancy um, um, transportation or anything, just, just walk from village to village, getting to, to know people, encouraging people, um, but without bringing a sense of importance that they were well-known and, and famous rabbis. And, uh, and also to experience what it would be like um, to live life without uh, much means. And so they, they traveled from, from village to village at different times like this. And, and at one point when they visited a certain village, uh, they came to a house of a rich man in the village thinking that he would have the means easily to put them up for the night and uh, ask if they could stay with him. And he said, well, there's a poor house just down the street. You can stay there, and they will take care of you. <clears throat> so uh, as they went through the town and they were talking to people, there was a scribe who said, uh, please, come and stay at my house. And so they did, and they stayed with that scribe. Uh, a year later, the people in the town um, and reached out to these two well-known rabbis to come and, and be honored guests and speak to them in their town. And so, um, because they were coming as, uh, as honored guests, the, uh, uh, the town paid for them to, to travel in style with a, uh, with a horse-drawn coach and, <clears throat> and coachmen and trunks and, and all kinds of things so they would um, be traveling nicely in style. When they arrived, this uh, rich man uh, said, and of course, you'll be staying at my house, and, and I have room for your horses, and for your carriage, and for your footmen, and, and for your trunks, and, and everything, and for you. So um, I've, uh, I've, I've told someone to tell uh, your, your coach driver where the house is, but just ask anybody, they know where I live. <clears throat> so sometime later, um, the rich man saw that, uh, that the horses and the coach and the footmen and the trunks and everything else they were traveling with was at his house, but the two rabbis were not. And he said, has anyone seen them? And, uh, and the people said, oh yes, they're staying at the house of the scribe. And, uh, and so he went to the house of the scribe and said, are you not receiving my hospitality? I offered you to stay in my house. He said, no, we're receiving the hospitality that you wanted to offer. You wanted a place for uh, the coach and the horses and the footmen and, and the trunks and all the fancy things, and you wanted all those things in your house. But when it was just us, uh, you didn't want to share your hospitality with us. So we'll stay here where we're going. You know, it may be that the rich man may have given money to support the poor house that was in the story so that there would be some uh, basic means of charity uh, for those who might have very basic needs. But what he doesn't show in that is actual hospitality actual wanting to take care of people, aside from the fact that they may seem important, add to his own importance, or maybe uh, give him some favors along the way. 
Do you remember recently we heard a story in Scripture of Abraham and his hospitality? You probably remember the story of uh, Abraham, and, and he was fairly um, wealthy uh, in a um, Bedouin kind of way with many tents and flocks and so on. And uh, <clears throat> these uh, visitors came up to him in the desert from he knew not where, um, traveling through the desert. And Abraham dropped everything that he was doing and, uh, and got you know, the best uh, uh, lamb and got the, uh, uh, had his household go about preparing a good meal and he was preparing a meal and, and stopped everything that he was doing to uh, share a meal with these visitors. Not just, this is what we're doing, but making, really, a feast for them. And the visitors turned out to be, um, it's a little bit unclear exactly, but either considered angels, messengers of the Lord, or the Lord, um, the Lord's presence uh, with them. And, and through that, uh, the visitors declare a uh, blessing on Abraham and his house. Uh, and through this is, is also given the uh, promise of a child, which has been given long before, but saying it will be happening soon, uh, that you'll have a child. And Sarah laughed because um, she's quite old at this point. But it's the hospitality that Abram shows uh, to these visitors that uh, sounds quite a bit like what we hear in our Hebrews text for today, right? Uh, that uh, always show hospitality to strangers, because by doing so, some have entertained angels without even knowing. It. What if we apply that understanding of hospitality not only to some person that we might encounter personally, but also what we say and do about how people should be treated in general? What if we try to make it a part of of the way that we see the world hardwired into? our understanding of how we're going to interact with the world. What if we considered every person that might have a need of hospitality as possibly an angel of the Lord? And to follow the Hebrews text for a minute, it goes on after this to say, remember those who are in prison as though you yourselves were in prison with them. And those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. <clears throat> that probably gives us a lot to think about. I have a hard time hearing that scripture and reconciling it with talking about people who deserve to be uh, caged up. We think about hospitality and what it means and what it would be like if we uh, centered our lives around caring for people. We think about that because this gospel today is all about hospitality. Jesus says to those who are guests, coming to receive hospitality, <clears throat> don't go up to take the place of honor. You're just going to be embarrassing. Um, you set yourself up as if you're the most important person, and then you get moved down to a lower rung. Uh, that's not a good idea. And along with that, trying to wire in people's minds the idea of a little humility in how you approach situations. So then Jesus says, if you're a host, if you're just inviting people to a meal uh, because they're important or wealthy or to do something for you or it's just expected because of your family, that's not very impressive hospitality um, if that's just who you're inviting. I mean, you may make a nice meal and you may have a good party. You may take care of them well. But everybody does that. Hospitality really is about taking care of people, right? Um, if, if you invite people to your house, um, you probably think about preparing a meal, um, the meal that you prepare in a different way than, than you might think about if you're going to prepare um, a meal for a soup kitchen, in which case a lot of times the thought is, what kind of, can I make that's enough food and, and survive uh, making it? There's a difference between hospitality with extra touches of um, taking care of people than just charity, which is about meeting basic needs and serves a function. 
the hospitality makes a person feel special and valuable. So Jesus says in today's gospel, it's nothing special to a party. Invite your friends and family and rich neighbors, big deal. Uh, I mean, so those people you may only invite because you'll hear about it later if you don't. Right? <clears throat> and some people you might want to impress, so they invite you over later too, or, or um, so they might get some favor later on. At any rate, um, that's natural, right? Everybody does these things. There's no spiritual dimension to that kind of hosting. It doesn't open you up. It doesn't create any new understanding in you um, by hosting in that way. It has a transactional quality. But Jesus says, instead of you a banquet, invite people who don't have the means or ability to invite you back. Take care of people who actually need to be taken care of. Invest your hospitality in people who need to feel cared for and special. Honor people that no one else notices, much less honors. And this is the hospitality that can transform us spiritually, that can make a difference, because it has to put our mind and our heart in a different place to do that. And doing that is sharing the love of God. It even opens us up to receive God's love in faith, because this is how God loves us. When God invites us to a feast, when Jesus gives us the gift of life, how are you going to repay that? There's no way that we can repay God's love. We are the ones who can't repay. We are the ones that fight in the feast who have no possibility of giving that kind of love to God. The kind of love that Jesus gives in his body and blood on the cross, we have no way of earning that or of giving that to God. We are the ones who are invited to the feast who, who have <clears throat> no way to repay. God loves us like the host who invites people who can never pay it back. We can't repay the love of God, but we can imitate it. We can't repay the love of God, but we can try to follow the way of Jesus. We can never earn the love of Jesus because it's a gift, and you can't earn a gift. But we can love Jesus, and we can love the people that Jesus loves. Doing that can help us to learn about this love of God. This love that God has for us who can't repay it. When we try to imitate that, it helps us to learn just how much God loves us. What it's like for God to love us. How amazing it is that God loves us this way. This brings me to one final story that Jesus tells from a different gospel text. But I think it adds to our understanding of the text today as Scripture interprets Scripture. You remember from Matthew chapter 25 when Jesus talks about um, in the final judgment, the separating of the sheep from the goats and the king says to the sheep when I was hungry you gave me food. When I was thirsty you gave me something to drink. When I was naked you gave me clothes to wear. When I was sick and in prison you visited me. And the sheep are dumbfounded, and they say, well, Lord, when did we see you hungry and give you food? Or when did we see you thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you naked and give you something to wear? Or when did we, we see you sick in a prison and visit you? And Jesus said, whenever you did this to the least of one of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. There is, of course, the goat side, which is the opposite of that, but the sheep. The beautiful thing in the story is they cared for Jesus and didn't even know that they were doing it. Because the love of God had transformed their hearts. The way that God loved them had transformed them to want to love in that way. 
God gathers us and cares for us and gives us food of life, even though we can't possibly repay it. May that love transform our hearts to love and to serve, to, to look at people and see them as those who should be honored, especially those who are not honored and served by the world. May that love transform our hearts to care for people in ways that they need to be loved and cared for. May it transform our hearts in mercy and in justice. Transform our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' name.
stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, the God not made, but one being with the Father. Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, we pray for your church. Fill us always with the knowledge of your love. Center us on your mercy and your grace for us and for the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who face disasters, especially those who are in danger from Hurricane Dorian today and this week. We pray for those who have suffered again from the loss and violence of another <coughs> mass shooting. Pray that you would give us the inspiration and the will to stop this. We pray for those who are hungry, for those without homes, for those in places of oppression, longing for freedom, for refugees, for those who are abused and neglected. Send your help, send your people. Lord, in your mercy. Pray for all who need healing. Remembering today the needs of Martin and Irene, Dixie, Lee, Julia, Marilyn, Don, Melissa, Tim, Pat, Pauline, Steve, Pam, Marsha, Braden, Susan, Irma. Doug, John, Mandy, Vicki, Brenda, Murray, Joanne, Mark, Heidi, Judy, Susan, and Michael, and all for whom we pray. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the love and the witness of all who have gone before, and we Lift up all who grieve and mourn. We remember today the family of Marie. Lord, give us always the trust and your gift of eternal life. In love with you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share a sign of Christ's peace. Okay, before you start sharing peace, just a little heads up. Apparently the battery, the computer battery was not full power. So anytime between now and the end of the service, the computer may shut off, so you might be prepared to have your hymnals ready. Sorry. <laughs> There's always Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Well, everybody goes to you. Look at the other yeah. ladies. Peace be with you, beautiful. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer you with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord our Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn.
We don't need a book. Blessing of Christ, one table. Body and 
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever Amen. almighty god father son and holy spirit bless you now and forever Amen.